I'm always trying to be as best as I can be. I always want to knock the ball out of the ballpark. Larry, he just wants it perfect, and he wants a bumper crop every year, just like every farmer. Larry's always asking what's coming out. What's, what's the next best thing? Everything about technology excites Larry. Egg is, it's not just tractors and plows, it's technology now, it's automation, it's the ability to do a job faster, more efficient. I've really targeted trying to stay on the cutting edge of technology and it's proving to be a major benefit. We're a 9,000 acre farm, yellow peas, canola and malt barley. This year we're going to be adding wheat back into our rotations and my folks are still actively involved and my wife and I obviously are very involved. My wife Courtney, we've been together for 13 years and we have two beautiful kids. Paige, she's 15 and Trace is 10. Our daughter, she likes the animal side of things, so she has her horse. Our son Trace, straight out the gate, he has been a John Deere farm kid. It's in his blood. We're a family that we work hard together and we play hard together. Right now for us, I'm busy planning out this year's crop, uh, meeting with different crop advisors and trying to put a whole plan together. Getting everything in line so that I can upload it right to the equipment. At the dealership level, I like to be challenged. The dealership likes to be challenged and that's how we grow our business. We want to make sure that we are kept on our toes. So as Larry is, he is adopting technology and he is trying to learn it himself, we are right there trying to learn it with him. At all times, I try to make sure that I have everything in order so that it's true numbers from start to finish. It's all about making sure that everything that you have is running smoothly as possible. And technology is allowing operations like Larry's to do that. So if we went back to that field that was held, we could draw that out. Could, yeah. Technology five years ago, a lot of it was not a whole lot of people trusted the data. Not everybody trusted technology. But now as things are evolving, guys are trusting the data, trusting technology. There's a high and there's a critical. We've been audited quite a few years in a row because they weren't believing the yields that we're pulling off and they, they, they surpass the area average. So we've taken yield maps, we've taken the numbers off the grain carts, we've taken all of our spreadsheets and they're finally believing what we're pulling off we can show them. Here's the true data. It's, it's hard data. It helps in every way. Even when we're planning what crop to put on what field, it's not on a piece of paper, it's all on a program. You know, you could have all of your yield information, spray reports, everything in the palm of your hand as soon as the job is done. And then it tracks everything. It keeps the books organized. Everything's ready. So this is how the storm kind of came through. I love the fact that from my phone, from my laptop, wherever I am, I can send something to one of these pieces of equipment or even log in to one of my monitors if, if one of the guys are having trouble and help him out. So see here, you can really see your good part of The more data he gets, the more you can see that whether it's justification of a decision that he made or whether it's something he's looking at to maybe change up variety or change up a fertilizer or a spray. <laughs> That way I can have a better opportunity of making the right decision for our operation. Being fifth generation, Larry wants nothing but the best for this farm. He wants to grow it way more than his dad even did and his grandfather did. Ever since I was a kid, I'd ride around with dad as much as I could in the tractor. The smell of that freshly turned dirt. It's, it's such a rush to me, and every year it just keeps evolving, and I love the thrill of riding that. 
egg is an emotional industry. That's how it's always going to be. But automation isn't going anywhere, technology is not going anywhere, it's only going to evolve. So if I can keep evolving with the whole industry, I want to be the best that I can be. Without technology, farming just kind of stays in the past and we're taking it to a whole new level and John Deere's taking it to a whole nother level. It's not work, it's play. I get to play every day. I love watching Larry work. Today's May 14th, uh, Larry's out seeding. He loves it all year round, but come seeding, you just see the excitement in his face. We've got our peas in, we've got our canola in, we've got our wheat in, and today's first day on malt barley. There's constant, there's constant shuffle. He's always on his phone. He's pushing an 18 hour day. He's averaging coming home at one in the morning. But it doesn't bother him. I got probably another two, two and a half weeks left of hard going. He, he just keeps going until it gets done and then we go play. <laughs> In the house, it's busier for me right now. My wife is fantastic. She's so supportive and, and the kids are the same. So I'm getting the kids ready and on the bus and then I have my day to start getting dinner prepped for the guys. And then the kids come home and because we have the 4-H sheep right now, they're working with their sheep. 4-H is, um, it's sort of like a way to learn how to control animals. So. That one, that one, those, like those four are all pages. I break a lot of the records I have done with these lambs so far, but I think I'm gonna do a lot better this year. 4 H on Parade's coming up here in a couple of weeks. We're all looking forward to that. Um, my son Larry, I've never seen him as enthusiastic as he has been the last few years with learning technology. Yeah, technology is ever evolving. The weather instrumentation, the documentation, the data collecting, I mean, the sky's the limit. My dad uses such good technology to help him succeed and get better yields saves you thousands of dollars. It doesn't, it doesn't take rocket science to pay for it. He's not double guessing himself. He can see on the programs and on the monitors what's actually going into the ground. Like if you overlap six inches to a foot when you're working in the field and you're doing a lot of acres, that's a lot of double product that you're putting on. All that kind of stuff hurts your crop. Where technology now is we're not overlapping very much, and it saves us tens of thousands of dollars. Plus, when the operator pulls into the field, the boundary pops up and everything's all pre-populated, so he's not sitting at the corner of the field wasting a bunch of time and fuel and labor. By having JD Link, it definitely allows you to set it up ahead of time. If we got a problem, we can figure it out a lot quicker than ever. Even if I've had some issues talking to Lander, he'll log in and we can go through it together from wherever he is. So it's definitely taken my stress level down. Our yields are continuing to climb uh, from technology. You know, I've pulled up the data records off of my equipment, you know, to see if I'm maximizing that piece of equipment and figuring out, you know, on average, gallons an acre, gallons an hour, how much horsepower we're actually maximizing on it. JD Link allows Larry to make sure the job is actually getting completed and also making sure that he has the information to show the product's getting applied the right way. Okay, and your, these are good? Yeah, so your bottom, what you're not using. The guys, you know, they have iPads, they have their phones, they enter stuff in as they're hauling grain or something in the field. They're keeping track of it. Every single person that works here treats this farm like it's their farm. We really try to have fun here. You know, if you're not having fun, why do it, right? G Link, a lot of joy in the eyes of the farmers that are running it. It's exciting to them. And when they see the machinery that outperforms what they expected, it's an awesome feeling. 
I have the best crew. I, they're family. It's a family activity, farming, and I was brought up that way. Larry was brought up that way, and Trace is being brought up that way. Technology really has gone far, and probably 10 years from now, I might be sixth generation for this farm. I just want to continue that favor, and hopefully this farm can live for a lot longer. To make a, a, a living at farming, you have to grow. With all this new technology, you know, the bigger we get, you add more equipment, you add more people. Yeah, so I have that stress, but this helps mitigate that. So you guys ready for the competition in a couple of weeks? We're going to be back now, you know that. Yeah, we'll yeah. you guys around on Saturday and Sunday, so get yeah. ready. Paige. She's won the whole show three years in a row. So her brother. Ah! Now, one of the things that I think is important, and I've heard the story from several different places, a young person applies for a job. A person looks at him and says, you look like you might have some agricultural or small community involvement. Yes, I have. Were you in 4-H? Yes. When do you want to start? Right now we're at the Calgary Stampede Grounds for 4-H on Parade. We're in Calgary, Alberta, just south of the Williams Farm, and we're a stone's throw from the Rocky Mountains. 4-H is one of the best things that a kid can do. For the kids, they get work ethic. It just makes me feel more mature because you're taking care of your own animals. When I'm at the 4-H, I'm in awe. Uh, this is the first year I have not been done seeding prior to 4-H on Parade event. I'm sure that inside he's just wondering how things are going back at the farm. Because of technology and the app, the John Deere app, he doesn't need to be there. I have logged into my John Deere just to kind of see how a couple things are going. We had a couple of issues arise, so I logged in and, and was able to have a look. I did have one issue with the drill and I was talking to Lander. Uh, he pulled up a map for me and we were able to fix the issues that we were having. If he didn't trust those guys and the technology, there's no way that he would leave them. So it's nice seeing him relaxed. Larry's use of technology certainly allows him to be able to take time away from what right now is a critical time, seeding. The confidence in all this technology it's taken a pretty good load off my plate, for sure. How heavy is your lamb? Uh, 122 pounds. What's your breed type behind him? Uh, Charlotte. When I put my hand on him here, he's nice and flat compared to the lambs I've placed above you today. Good job. Our grand champion for the market lamb class division is 301 Paige Williams from Airdrie. I got grand champion market lamb. Done a great job. Thank you. And then I got reserve champion pen of three. Our reserve grand champion pen of three is 103 Trace Williams from Airdrie. Congratulations. I'm so proud of these kids. They, they put in the work. All this hard work that they put into it it does pay off. Having that capability to see how my seeding is progressing, it allowed me to be down here with my family. Words can't even explain how I feel. Morning, sir. How we doing? Another day in paradise. All right. How are you, Mr. Trace? Good to you. Good. What's the plan? Well, I'd like to go look at some wheat, and we'll uh, look at some barley that's down there as well, and we'll finish off in the peas. Step out and go have a boo. Yeah, let's have a look, see what's happening. Mm -hmm. 
So Al, what do you what do you think all in all here of what we're seeing? Crops coming along. You know what? Your flag's clean, relatively clean. You've got some fill going. We're doing good. I mean, it's been wet for a long time. It could be a heck of a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, we had we had that that issue that we caught where we weren't seeding on one section. So Lander had me on my, on the my field analyzer. We walked right to the spot, and we started like where we saw an issue, and we started playing <clears throat> playing the game backwards. And then you were confirming it as you were out scouting the fields. Plant counts on and on and on. That's yep. right. So we corrected the problem. We found out there was a humidity issue, but it was so nice to, you know, look at it on a technology side and have it confirmed. Verify it. You know, by an agronomy side. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's proven to be a valuable asset. It's real hard data. It's time stamped. It's date stamped. You know what it is. Here it is. Versus, you know, I'm ready to down on a piece of paper and, you know, that was, oh, I think I did that a day later, you know, or maybe even an hour later, right? And they can go back in time too if you're going to go look at weather maps and correspond it. Yeah. Or you have a wreck in the field. What happened? Why? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. It's going to help me base my decision on next year yeah. on what's going to happen, right? And if something there is anomaly here, what's the why? Yeah. Why did it do what it did? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think we got some potential here for? Get it in the bin before you start counting your chickens. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm agree with that, <laughs> but I just got to have some dreams somewhere along the line. <laughs> you know, we were all looking forward to getting in here with these straight cut headers. You know, it was just, it looked like a dream. This is our third snowstorm, so it's not really a dream anymore. It's kind of a nightmare. Being a farmer, you always have your neck crooked up to the sky, and it's like, stop. <laughs> Weather's the killer. When you have put so much heart and soul into this and capital, you know, yeah, you want nothing but the best. I, I am. I want. I want nothing but the best. But these are the cards that were dealt. We have a great team. I have a great wife behind me all the way. My folks behind me. We're all here. We're gonna get it done. We don't know when, but we're gonna get it done. Right now we're trying to uh, take off some standing wheat. My moisture is not changing. So, pretty fantastic. I'm definitely going to grab a sample here and run home and just do a double check on my own moisture meter in my shop and get everybody lined up and ready to roll. So we're at 15.3%. It's tough for wheat, but uh, the terminal is in dire straits for some wheat right now, and they'll take it up to 18% and dry it down. So we're good to go. I'm gonna actually phone the manager right now and tell him that uh, we'll get rolling. So it's been challenging weather-wise. The machines have been a godsend only because of the technology John Deere now has with them. It's taken such a stress level off of me and my operators. Every day amazes me how the technology continues to change out here. You've got to get the yields up. The acres have got to produce more and this technology has given us that advantage. When you start using that technology and realizing that the combine actually makes setting changes based on a picture on the monitor and it repeatedly just reviews that picture to maintain that sample that you've asked it for. It, you actually have to look in the grain tank to make sure this is happening. The headers have absolutely amazed me. You know, this down crop, 
when they kick them into, into hydroflex, they're shaving the ground. We were introduced to these headers last year and um, given the crop conditions we've had this year, uh, the pea crops we grew, between the rain and the snow, they were pasted right to the ground. And you looked at it and you're thinking, how can I combine carpet? And um, these headers were a saving grace. You know, the barley and the wheat that we have that is flat as well, they're getting 99% of it. You know, that, that's big savings. I mean, that's money in the bank, right? All of it saves you money in the long run if you have technology that's uh, going to read the land a little bit better. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I got a split load. I got uh, wheat in the front for Williams Farms and uh, canola in the back. We're uh, still maximizing what we can out of this equipment. And when it goes to the terminal, our samples are consistent. They're happy with what they're seeing. We're averaging over 100 on our barley so far and good bushel weights. Wheat has been incredible. Right now it's an acre game. We're half done harvest. If we can get some good weather, we probably only have a couple weeks left. Hopefully we're gonna get a break in November for two weeks coming up and let us get it done. When you look at the forecast, it looks like the next two weeks is flurries every once in a while. Speaking with Larry and Roy, they've never had a year where they never got it off, so I hope this is another one of those years. There's some days where you do feel defeated, and how, and how do you not? But, you know, you kind of got to rise above it. I'm optimistic I'm going to get it. <laughs>